Good evening, welcome to another edition of Native Voice TV. I'm Sundas Martinez. And I'm Siwa Pili Rose Amador, and together we are Native Voice TV. We are the Indigenous people. Well, we have a great show. You're going to get educated. Am I going to get educated? Yes, you are. It's okay. about time. <laughs> it's about time I get educated. <laughs> yes. I bet you don't know much about Navajo rugs, and you've probably seen them everywhere. You've seen them hanging. They're beautiful. Yeah, um, they are. You know, mm -hmm. what I really like about the Navajo rugs is all the different patterns, and, and uh, you know, they just almost like go back and forth and sideways, and it's just... The work is just so well, you're intricate. Not explain it. I'm not going <laughs> to explain it. Back and forth and sideways. Okay. Well, you know, some of the patterns on there. Let's really, learn something yeah. about so it. So we're going to learn today. I'm going to learn today. She's going to listen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll both listen. Okay. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Anacita Agustinez. And she's been on the show before, but actually she's coming to educate us on rugs, uh, different types of rugs. And... Welcome, Anasita. Welcome back. Yate. Welcome, welcome. Yate. Um, thank you. Um, my family uh, is Diné, and we're from the western region of the Navajo Reservation. And um, I'm born for the Twitty Chitney, the Bitterwater clan, on my mother's side. And my paternal clan is on my father's side, which is a Filipino. Um, the western, um, western area of the Navajo Reservation is very well known for its weaving. And in fact, if you were to look at a, a map of the reservation, you'd see all the weaving styles regional. There'd be different types of styles, and you could look at a rug, and you could tell where oh, really? it's from by the colors, by the design, and, um, you know, and how old it is. And I brought various samples of different things here so we could sort of talk about uh, Navajo rug weaving. Great. Well, I think they're beautiful. Now, tell us about this little doll here and what she's doing and what well, she's working on. What I this is a rendition of a, a traditional loom, and um, of course, I couldn't bring um, a full-size loom today. So, what I wanted to do is show um, our viewers um, what a rug rug weaving. All of these rugs here are woven on a simple loom, sim similar to this, and this is. Um, sort of a scene you'd see, um, a classic scene, a, a Navajo woman weaving, and really they do weave in jewelry. All my aunties. Oh, really? And you'd be surprised. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're, it's part of, it's not decoration, it's part of <coughs> your ceremony, it's mm -hmm. part of your protection, and it's part of um, your, you know, wearing your jewelry. Your, your stones is, is to heal you, to protect you, to inspire you. So you'd see women wearing their jewelry their, when they're butchering, when they're doing their daily chores. So it's not just mm -hmm. something you see people do when they go out to, um, you know, not only just ceremonies, but in mm -hmm. everyday life. So this is very, very typical. Um, this loom is really special because it sure of shows how um, weaving has been brought down to our people as a gift from Spider Woman, mm -hmm. who was given that gift through our creation story, you know, by, by her, um, her father, Sky. And this initial pole here is called um, the Sky Pole, and this is from the sun. Mm -hmm. And this, these, these um, limbs here, these wooden limbs here, is called the earth. So you've got that, and you've got this initial um, st stick here, which is considered the lightning or the sun, and that's the power. And you, your, your, um, your different threads and your weaving threads here come from crystal rock and from lightning. Mm -hmm. And all the, um, the combs that a woman would use to batten down and to keep the fibers really tight is, comes from the white shell woman. And it's, now it's made out of wood, but traditionally in the ancient times they would be made out of a white shell clay, mm -hmm. or a white shell stone and, and with, with fingers that would be used to batten down that. Wow. How would they so make the stone? Just carve it? You'd, you, you'd trade for it. Trade for and it. you'd carve and, mm -hmm. and uh, make it look like a comb. Wow. And so this is, it shows like how weaving is is a ceremony in itself and every single thing every time you pick the the wood you pick where it comes from the tree that it's chosen from where it's you know is it from the yellow pine is it from the cedar pine mm -hmm. did it come from a really high altitude or low altitude mm -hmm. it would all be very important all the different wood you'd use all the elements mm -hmm. as well as not only that but the sheep that you'd shorn to make your your um, various yarns so i thought that was just 
really special in terms of why weaving is just so important because it is it is that universe that we have. It's, it's almost like there's more work to getting prepared to the weaving than, that, than the actual weaving, right? Yes, we don't even know how, how much goes into it. Yeah. How, t how tall would a typical one be? Well, it depends on your rug. I brought various examples. Mm -hmm. So this would be the size of your rug. So if you were to make um, um, a three by five rug, your loom would be three by five with okay. the size. Mm -hmm. Or it would be developed so that you could, um, you know, um, do half and then pull up the other half. And mm -hmm. um, you'd have rugs as big as six feet by nine feet, seven by ten feet. Um, and I've got various examples of, of the rug. So it just depends on how, how gifted or, you know, um, the weaver is or whether she got a special order for a special size. And that's how the loom, and it's all, all fully adjustable. Wow, and that's a lot of work. So that takes an awful long, long and time. And mo mobile, these together. things can be put, put together, um, made as, as permanent as you want or mm. as, as mobile as you want. Because people would pack these up and move it from their winter camp to their summer camp if they wanted or have one that they would do in their winter home and then one that they would do in their summer home. Mm -hmm. It's not unusual to see a Navajo weaver doing two or three rugs at one time. Wow. Oh. And so they're just adjusted then to the size rug they mm -hmm. want to make. And uh, one reason why I like this loom too is because of the colors. You have the traditional colors of the gray, the brown, the beige, and the white. And traditionally, you'd have a sheep that you would raise and you'd shear. And out of the shearing of the sheep, you'd carve the wool and you eventually would use something like a spindle such as this. And this is how you would get your, your yarn from the sheep. And these are the traditional colors because you'd have a light sheep and a dark sheep. Mm -hmm. And from the black wool and the white wool, you'd get your various um, colors. And if you wanted to go beyond those colors, then you'd have to get in your vegetable dyes and your traditional dyes. But to get, for, if you had a white sheep and a black that. sheep, you would be able to do gray, browns, tans, beiges, and you'd have all those colors from this, those two sheep. Ah, so this one would have been dyed then? Yeah. This Vegetable. would not be dyed. This would have been, if we were talking about very early Navajo weaving, mm -hmm. this, to get red, um, there was, you'd have to go and you trade for Mexican cloth because the Mexican um, uh, weavers would have the cochinelle bug, mm -hmm. which was that red ant, and they would get the red um, cochinelle dye from Mexican cloth, unravel it, and incorporate it into a weaving. Wow. Now, and what's the difference between the Mexican weaving and the Diné weaving? I brought an example. Um, mm. This is a, an old serape that I've had in the family, and this mm -hmm. is from the 1940s. And if you were to look at how fine this is, it almost feels like silk. Yeah, it's wow. very fine. And this is, this is so, so beautiful. It is. And it's so similar because you have, you know, you've got, you know, so many more colors. But the thing is that you've got the borders, you've got the crystal pattern. And uh, depending on what anthropologist you read or who you speak to, they're always, you're always going to sh show that Navajos were influenced by Mexicans, by the, the Spaniards who came forward, the, and also by the Pueblo influence. Well, back and then there weren't the Mexicans, they were just the, the Indians. And yes, now, yes, yeah. uh-huh. Yeah. The, the, traditional, the traditional Nahuatl the people yeah, who were Nahuatl. the weavers. Yeah. And in fact, um, the Navajos, if you were to look at the name Navajo, which we call ourselves Diné, Navajo is, is also from the Nahuatl word, meaning that we were above, that they had to go forward, yeah. above their traditional homeland. Mm -hmm. And so that's, there's, there's a lot of um, trade, there's a lot of travel yes. that we don't, we don't realize that, that was going forward. <coughs> but this, yeah. is from, this is from Mexico. And um, this rug here on the table, this is a saddle blanket. And this saddle blanket is very thick. And you can tell that it's more utilitarian. Yeah, and it was made um, for a saddle yeah. and to, to be used on your horse. And so it doesn't have any borders. And um, it's really, really thick. And it has the traditional colors. Um, if this was a Navajo classic, this re uh, red would have been from the cochineal 
die from the bugs and that, that red ant. Mm -hmm. And this would have been an indigo, which mm -hmm. also would have been traded from, from the Mexican area, area mm -hmm. um, to come up north. And um, all, also they would also trade for, um, whenever you'd have sh soldiers coming through town or traders coming through town, they would get you know, um, the, those cl cloths and actually unravel it and rework that red or that oh. color into the rug and oh. make their colors that way. Wow. Um, or do the traditional vegetable dyes mm -hmm. to get into oh. rugs. That's something. You know what I find fascinating about this? You said it's that old, it's from the 40s. It's, the colors are so rich still. Yeah. I mean, it's not faded in, at, at all. It looks it's Isn't beautiful. Isn't it just beautiful? It's very and, bright. And, and it feels almost like silk, but it's a very, very, very fine um, cotton. Wow, and it just, beautiful. I'm just so amazed by it because it does feel yeah. like, like silk on this. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But the, as I was saying that this is a, a saddle blanket and you can tell because it's, it's thick and it's a really basic striping. How old is this? This one here is probably about 25 years old. Yeah. Wow, it's nice. It's, really, it's really soft. Sense. Yes, and it's I heavy. always and I always smell it. It still smells <laughs> like your sheep, and it's one of my favorites. And all of these rugs that I brought that are from Navajo land are all made by my relatives. I also brought another example of a rug. Um, this one here is really special. I love the colors. You've got the yellows, but you still have, and I tend to like the real traditional ones where you don't have mm -hmm. a lot of color, but you have the traditional colors of this, the, the, the yellows, the, 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 you know, the, the more natural colors. But it's really special because you were saying how things are symmetry. Yeah. And all of Navajo rugs are made in a symmetry design. Mm -hmm. If you were to fold it in half, they would be the same. If you were to fold it any other way, they would all be the same. Yeah, yeah. But this is this is all part of that symmetry and that balance. Wow. And this is all in the weaver's mind. And none of this is ever pre-diagram. It's all what they feel as they go through and do it. This is a traditional storm pattern design. And this is made by um, my area in the western area. Uh, it's sort of a more of a stylized storm pattern because this middle section comes out like this. This middle section is considered the universe. This is the home, the hogan. This is your spirit center. And these um, patterns coming out are lightning. And these are lightning or like clouds. And you have four rectangles on each side there. Mm -hmm. Those are the four directions, the four sacred mountains, mm -hmm. and um, also outside of the universe. And inside, you have another design which is sort of a crystal shape as well. And that also generates that, the, um, the power of, of the, of, well, the whole idea of it, they call it a storm pattern, but it really is, it's a pattern for female rain. Mm -hmm. Because the whole idea is you're, you're, um, you have these symbols of plant and animal. This is an animal symbol here, excuse me, this one here. And this is a plant symbol. This is the corn symbol here. Yeah. And if you were to look at it one way, you'd, you could tell that it is a corn, mm -hmm. but it's stylized, so it's flipped so it's on flipped. that. But it also uh, shows that you're asking for the, the rain to nourish the earth, to nourish your surroundings. Nourish and, animals. And yes, and to, mm -hmm. for protection for all the animals, all the plants, and of course, our, our spiritual center and self here. So it's almost like a like a prayer mat, if you think about it. Right? In, a, in a sense, just in like sense. with sand paintings, which are yeah. like mm -hmm. people liking them to mandalas and mm -hmm. things like that. And but I just this is a this is a storm pattern. I have another example. What is this? this one here, it's okay. also it's um, more more designs like, it, and this is more stylized. That reminds me of an eagle. Yes, mm -hmm. well, it's Shape. but they're more like the clouds and the lightning. Mm -hmm. I have another example of another storm pattern, but this one here, I, I consider this a little bit more stylized. Beautiful. And I think it, my, one of my cousins made this one. Oh, the beautiful colors. Now this one here, you'll recognize it again as another storm pattern. Yeah. This rug I made when I was 18 years old. And oh, this wow. was, this one. Um, so it's like three years old then, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and you'll see that it's, it's a little bit more simple than what we looked at, mm -hmm. which is very stylized, a lot more experienced weaver. And because you just have a simple, <laughs> a simple center and, and um, you know, your feathers and, um, you know, and, and um, your simple border. But you can Beautiful. already recognize that this is a storm pattern compared to, to a saddle blanket. So when you look at Navajo rugs, you're already going to say, this is a storm pattern. These are the four mm -hmm. sacred mountains, the four sacred directions. Because in the Navajo universe, the reason why we believe that our tribe has, has prospered and lived and, and has been so successful as a people is that we have listened to the, our ancestor stories, which is to stay within your four sacred mountains. And if you stay in your four sacred mountains, our people would always be strong. Mm -hmm. And those four sacred mountains is, is uh, Mount Hesperus in uh, Durango to the north and to the east is Mount Blanco in Colorado. Colorado. Mm -hmm. And um, in the south, it's Mount Taylor in New Mexico. And of course, on the west is uh, San Francisco Peaks in Flagstaff. Mm -hmm. And so when, when um, you stay within those four sacred mountains, our people always stay strong and wow. to this date. And you're familiar already with, with um, the Save the Peaks issues mm -hmm. and all of that. And it is, it is a very, very sacred um, um, part of our Navajo belief system, the San Francisco Peaks. Why don't you mention for our audience sake about the San Francisco Peaks? Well, the San Francisco Peaks is in Flagstaff and, and um, that Flagstaff, of course, as you know, is not part of the Navajo Reservation anymore because it was conveniently annexed by the, by the, the state of Arizona. Mm -hmm. But before, that was part of the Navajo Reservation. Mm -hmm. And it's... The it's state was, right? Exactly. <laughs> and they're, they're trying to, um, they're trying to do different types of um, artificial snowmaking on the mountains. They've already got Snow Bowl up there, which was really, um, people had, had um, didn't want that to go forward. They were able to do that, and now they want to do more um, desecration of the mountains and, and just keep it f away from uh, our ability to go to the mountains. I also read a little article in the newspaper that there have some contamination problems and, and on the reservation too. Oh, with the mining. Yeah. The, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's right. Yes. Yeah. There's a there's a whole show on that. Yeah. <laughs> there could be. This is another <laughs> example of a whole different another style. And this is uh, more from the eastern area. This is called more like a two gray hills design. And you'll see that it's different from the storm pattern. It comes from a middle center mm -hmm. and it has, um, has the red background. And, and it comes from a center crystal coming out. And it's, so it's, it's very different. And it's made from that area. Mm -hmm. I also brought um, some rugs that work. I that I yeah. thought were really special. That I when I traveled to Peru, I just thought um, was really interesting because so many of the designs were so similar to what we see in Navajo rugs. And um, I went to a village called Chinchero, which is their their famous weaving village. And this blanket here has all kinds of designs very similar universal the symbols to all our native people wow. you've got the crystals you've got animal designs and it's just you know the, with it's just so beautiful with the cross and it's just and the colors mm. it's beautiful it is it's just really a lot of work that goes into these it's something else and that was a really, really special um, opportunity to go see their different types of looms. They don't use an upright loom like we do. They use a backstrap loom that's even more mobile, where the woman has the, the, the part of the loom wrapped around her back against a, a pole or a tree. And actually, you, you're weaving this way from it. And it's just really, really different. Wow. This is a, um, from Peru. This is an example of their sash belts from Peru. Mm -hmm. And then this is an uh, example of a Navajo sash belt. Wow. And I just thought it was just so interesting how, you know, we just have things so similar. And yeah. I just yes. thought it was so beautiful wow. to see the two different styles of two different cultures that are just really, it's all the same. We're just all our That's people. Sure. And this Fond is unique, the sash belt, because you have a different design on the back. 
and that's a really, oh, wow. really special weave. And if you were to see a Navajo rug like this, they do make Navajo rugs like this, mm -hmm. this size or this size, it'd be called a two-faced design oh. because it'd be something totally different on the back. And that um, also is really special in Peru. Mm -hmm. They would show me that they have designs that are two-faced. There you have this design here, and then you've got a different design on the back. You know what I saw over in Washington, D.C. at the Native American Museum is they had a Thule boat that was uh, um, California Indian, okay. but then they also had one that was from Peru, which is you similar. Know, similar. Yeah, yeah, isn't it? There's something. Yeah. I, I brought this to share, and this is a Navajo wedding basket. And um, a lot of historians are always trying to figure out, like, well, who brought weaving to the Navajos? You know, mm -hmm. Was it the Spanish? Was it the, you know, where did they get it from? But mm -hmm. we've been, as all cultures, we've been weaving baskets forever. Mm -hmm. And if you look at a Navajo wedding basket and how it's constructed and designs, and it is so similar to weaving. And, you know, we, we were, we're self-taught, you know. Yeah. Spider Women gave us the ability to do our weaving. And, um, and we were also, of course, influenced with through trade. And people don't realize that even in the 1500s, 1600s, how much trade was, was happening through all of native country. And we're talking oh, yeah. all the way from Alaska all the way down right. to yeah. Tierra del Fuego. And, you know, all our roads, all our highways, those are all just old yeah. old Chocolate trading mm -hmm. all, yes those yeah. are all trading um, trading um, roads yeah. that we've already were long long established yeah. and so there was a lot of um, communication going on there was a lot of people sharing ideas and incorporating them and, and doing different things because you do see an influence with the oh, Mexican definitely. designs into Absolutely. Navajo rugs and it's all utilitarian you know you had to have um, clothing you had mm -hmm. to have um, things to wear and these, these saddle blankets eventually became really famous as chief's blankets. Mm -hmm. And the irony is with Navajos that we didn't have chiefs. And, but, but the reason why they were called <coughs> chief's blankets is because they were so highly sought, at, sought um, after by other tribal chiefs to wear. Do you remember um. when Curtis was doing his photography? and posing different people. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if you were to look at all those poses, poses all the um, people are wearing Navajo blankets. They're wearing chief's blankets. Mm -hmm. And so it became even more highly prized because they would want to wear something like that because it would show wealth. It yeah. would show that you would, could be a Mandan warrior and you had the ability to trade with the Navajo. Mm -hmm. How far away is that I and like able to right get a, a chief's blanket? Yes. Yeah. Yes, and I was just looking at the designs behind yeah. you. But when they were able to show that, it showed wealth and ability mm -hmm. to do trade, and that's where, where it became a chief's blanket, because we didn't have chiefs mm -hmm. at all. And then those were made really just for trade. Now, how much is a skill being maintained in the culture? Uh, I think very strongly. Mm -hmm. I think very that's strongly. The, 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 um, the Navajos have a very, very strong Navajo weaving cooperatives. There's the, the basketry, the pottery, the jewelry making. And we're just lucky because we're concentrated. We have numbers yeah. and we have the language. And, and we're out in a reservation that nobody wants to be around. We're not like the Californian tribes where, you know, it's paradise out here and everybody just, right. just wants a piece of it. Yeah. And, I mean, not very many people want to um, hike up, even though we know how beautiful it is, live mm -hmm. out in a desolate area when they think it's, there's nothing out there. And, right. and we know right. better, but it is a yeah. hard life. And, um, and like any, any traditional craft, you know, you're, you're always losing it. But um, I do think that the tribe itself is reviving it and keeping it strong with classes, with, with the school programs and things like that. Do you do any teaching in San Jose? No, no. Yeah. I, just, I just do this for my, myself, my mm -hmm. hobby. Um, I did um, help a friend um, do a, a couple of seminars at De Anza. Oh, good. And then um, in the early 80s, we did a rug show, a traditional rug show downtown San Jose. And a good friend of mine brought out a bunch of antique rugs. And we showed about 20 beautiful antique rugs that yeah. were really just 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 so beautiful i just well, I've i never understand seen you, you and your family are starting on rugs in january so next yeah, year you'll have a project. new rug to bring on the show she's gonna bring a native <laughs> voice tv rug <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> be about 20 years in the making <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you mm -hmm. sharing these rugs with us. Oh, they are, are beautiful. beautiful. I've always admired them, and they are just yeah, gorgeous. I really appreciate how you did that whole cross-culture thing, too. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's nice for, for us to understand and learn that, the, you know, that we have our, our, our ties with other Native people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it all comes, I mean, the beauty of it is that it just all comes from utilitarian purposes. I mean, yeah. our jewelry, I mean, people look at, you know, oh, Indians wear jewelry, Indians need yeah. to wear jewelry, and it's not because it's not we need that, to yeah. wear jewelry, it's because we respect that, that the stone is a sacred stone, yeah. that it is our protection, mm -hmm. it is our mm -hmm. healing stone, and it's what we've been told and passed down. I, yeah. I know in my family, you're told and you're passed down. You wear certain stones during certain seasons. You know, we're now in the season of turquoise because yeah. this is the winter season right. and and this is this is the stone for the season you know and it changes throughout the year you know mm. where we are we are in this the solstice season so yeah. it's it's those are the things you know we we do mm -hmm. you know and those are the things how we keep and maintain our, our culture through that oh yeah oh well thank you for being mm -hmm. here we really appreciate it. And we're going to have you back we have oh, much definitely. more to talk about i think we have some announcements to run through real quick through the, we have no time for those yeah. <laughs> anyhow well, you know, when she comes back, we, we would also really like to have her talk about uh, what's going on in her tribe. Yes, too. absolutely. Yeah. We want to hear about the issues yeah. mm -hmm. that are facing yeah, definitely. the people on the reservation oh, with all the yeah. contaminants and so forth. Yeah. It's not fun and games. It's, yeah. There's always hardship. Yeah, but well, thank you is. for being here. Oh, thank you. Appreciate and it. thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Good night. Good night. That's okay. <laughs> Children's eyes. Indigenous way, indigenous way. I'm in the hearts of my children's eyes.